Let's review how to simplify square root. Say I was to give you the square root of 60. We want to determine what is it that multiplies to be 60. So think of two numbers that multiply to be 60. It can be any combination at this point. So maybe you select 10 and 6. If neither of these are prime numbers, then you are going to branch them off further. What multiplies to be 10? 2 and 5. These are both prime numbers, so I am done with a branch of this tree. I go to 6, and 6 is 2 and 3. These are both prime numbers, so again, I am done. Now, what this means, what this means, this means 60 is really 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, or 2 squared times 3 times 5. So when we relate this to our square root, this is the square root of 2 squared times 3 times 5. And remember, if I have a radical of a product, then I can break that apart. So I get radical 2 squared, and then I'm going to leave the 3 times 5 together because neither of them have a square. And the square root of 2 squared, well, square roots and squares are inverse operations, so they cancel each other out. So this becomes 2 square root of 3 and 5 can't simplify, so all I can do is combine them together to be 15. So the square root of 50 became 2 square root of 15. Now, if this was negative 60, if this was negative 60, you follow the same process about breaking apart your 60. But to take care of the negative, we start by bringing out i, because the square root of negative 1 is i. So this is i square root of 60. And what is the square root of 60? It is 2 square root of 15. So i times 2 square root of 15. And to write the final answer in standard form, we just write the the non-radical component in front, then our imaginary component, then the radical. All right, let's do another one. Let's look at the square root of 78. Okay, the square root of 78. Well, this might not be one with as easy of a multiple, but I know it's even. Anytime it's an even number, I know 2 goes into it. So 2 goes into 7 3 times with 1 left over, that's 39. So 2 goes into 78 39 times. These are both prime numbers. Okay, 39 cannot be simplified any further. Since they are both prime numbers, we are done. The square root of 78 is only the square root of 78. Now let's say it was the square root of 72 instead. The square root of 72. This is even as well, but this time it's 2 times 36. 2 is even, or 2 is prime, 2 is prime. 36 can be broken apart further to 6 and 6. And some of you might already notice something about a square happening, but I'm going to go ahead and break it all the way down to our prime factorization. So that's 2 and 3, and that's 2 and 3. Now, when I'm dealing with square roots, I'm really concerned with having squares. So, as I write out this factorization, I'm going to want to group the squares together. So, I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So, what I really have here is I have two sets of squares. So, I have this 2 by itself, but then I have 2 squared, and I have 3 squared. Well, what the square root does what the square root does is it gets rid of the square. So these guys here with the square, they're going to come outside the square root. These guys with the square will come outside of the square root, and they will lose their square in the process. So 2 times 3 comes outside the square root. This 2 is not squared, so he stays under the square root. So 2 times 3 is 6. I get 6 square root of 2. Okay, let's do another one. Square root of 34. 
All right, so this one is even, so I can do two. And two goes in there 17 times. This is a prime number. Both of these are prime numbers, so that one cannot be reduced. All right, let's try square root of 75. Well, 2 does not go into this one, but it's, well, 75, I know 25 goes into that because 75 cents is 3 quarters. So I could break it apart like this. And then 25 is 5 times 5. And okay, so now that we have 5 times 5 times 3, that's 3 times 5 squared. Well, remember the square root gets rid of the square. So the 5 comes outside, and the 3 stays under the square root. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do square root of negative 256. So since it's the square root of a negative, the first thing I'm going to do is bring out the i. So I get i square root of 256. And I'm going to figure out what multiplies to be 256. So 256, um, that's, let's see, that's even. So 2 goes in there. 2 goes in there 128 times. Okay, 128. Um, 4 goes in there. I, four, I know 4 goes into those. So 4 goes into 12 3 times. 4 goes into 8 2 times. That 2 is prime, so it was done. 4 becomes 2 times 2. Those are prime. They're done. 32 is 4 times 8. 4 is 2 times 2. 8 is 2 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. All right, so let's figure this out. Let's figure out our pairs. So what I could do is I could also just count by how many there are, but let's go ahead and go with pairs. So I have 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared. Notice all of these are squared. So there are four sets of twos. There are four sets of twos. And so the square root will cancel out each of these exponents of squared. So the square root of 256 becomes 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So this becomes 2 times 2 times 2 times 2i. Two so 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, 16i. So this is how we reduce our radicals.